Hi everyone and welcome to the A Strings YouTube channel. My name is Ryan Haberfield and I have hijacked the channel from Adam for a series of some educational content. If you don't know who I am already, you can check out the first video where myself and Adam did an interview. Just a very quick overview. I am a professional guitarist. I played with a bunch of artists, Jesse J, Mel C from the Spice Girls and a load of others. And I'm on the channel giving you some educational and some information, tips, tricks and guitar hacks and that sort of thing. I also have an online guitar school called fretlix.com and if you want to check that out, you can see that in the description below. So then, in this video, we are going to be talking about the capo, how to use a capo, and I'm gonna show you some mistakes that I see people make with a capo all of the time. Now, if you don't already own a capo, I highly recommend you get one. This is the Ernie Ball one. This one's absolutely amazing. It's really, really easy to use. It's easy to clip on your guitar. And now personally, I like these sort of spring-loaded ones. They're the ones I tend to go for. I know there's a bunch of other makes on the market where you can kind of clamp them on. But for me, I like the ones with the spring. And this only ball one's awesome. There'll be a link to the description below in that. So, reasons for using the capo then. I personally love the sound of a guitar when you're playing open strings. So if I'm playing open Gs, Cs, Ds, Anything where the guitar resonates, it, this, this just sounds very different. If I play the same thing with bar chords, I mean, it sounds fine, but there's something about the guitar as an instrument just really, really sings with open strings. And that's the beauty of a capo. So if your song isn't in a key where you get these lovely open strings, we can use the capo to solve that prob problem. So if you don't already have one, absolutely get one of these. Great for singers as well. So if you're a singer-songwriter or if you've gone out playing a lot of gigs and you want to switch keys up easily, the capo is the answer to all of that. So let's talk about the one, this is probably the main thing I see loads and loads of guitarists do wrong and it's all to do with tuning. Now if you haven't already, watch my tuning video where I talk about a bunch of tips about tuning the guitar and this is very similar to what I'm going to talk about with the capo today. So here's the scenario then. I've tuned my guitar. It's tuned to my open strings. Okay, so I'm nice and in tune when I play open. And now what probably you might be finding is, you grab your capo, you put it on the neck, so let's say I'm gonna go to fret number seven, and put the capo on, and then you might find when you play, things start sounding a little bit out of tune. I mean, it's not bad, but it's a little bit out of tune. Let me try another fret, let's try the fifth fret. Okay, it sounds pretty good, but certainly when we went to the seventh fret, that G chord is just sounding a little bit out of tune. Now, depending on what guitar you're using, this guitar is particularly good for tuning. This is one of the Yamaha acoustics, really, really great instrument. But if you find your guitar hasn't been set up in a while, you haven't had the intonation done in a while, or you may be using a lower end instrument, this is an issue you're going to see a lot of the time. So if I just kick on the tuner, now, obviously when I tune, with the capo like this, the notes are going to be different. Okay, so obviously I'm no longer E, A, D, G, B, E anymore because I'm tuning to whatever's on the seventh fret, but this is the issue that I see. So as I'm plucking through the strings, that one's okay, that one's sharp, that one's sharp, that one's really sharp, that one's sharp, and that one's also sharp. So straight away there, that's the point I'm getting at too. When you play with the capo, stick the capo on first, then tune, not the other way around. So don't tune to open strings and then put the capo on and play. You want to put the capo on first and then tune. Because the problem I have now is most of those strings are sharp. So if I was playing with some other instruments and they're all banging tune, all of my strings are sharp. So I'm going to be slightly out of tune with them. So what I will do then, I'll stick the capo on whatever fret. So let's go back to the seventh and then I'm going to tune my strings. So remember now, because I'm on the seventh fret, I'll be tuning to whatever these notes are. So that's a B. That one's gonna be an F sharp. And generally when you do this, when you put the capo on and you tune, most of the time the notes have gone a bit sharp. See, that one's gone super sharp. Okay, so I've just, what I've just done there then is I've gone through each of the strings and I've tuned them up with the capo actually on the guitar. And then what that results in, my guitar now 
is lovely and in tune to that area of the neck. So before it was sharp, normally you'll find, as I said, when you put the capo on, it may sharpen strings. Some places are worse than, worse than others. So that is a number one tip, okay? Whenever playing with a capo, make sure you put the capo on first and then tune. Now, what is more likely they're gonna happen now is when I go back to my open strings, they're gonna be out of tune. That one's okay. See, that one's flat. That one's okay. Not too bad. That one's really flat. And that one's really flat as well. That's because I've tuned according to what that capo is, okay? So that is an absolute key thing when playing with the capo. Put the capo on first and then tune. Do not tune to open strings and then put the capo on afterwards. Okay, so that was the tip then about how to tune with the capo. Remember, put the capo on, then tune. So another thing, another just little tip that I see guitarists always do. If you put the capo on, let's say I put the capo on the second fret, okay? Obviously, I would now tune, now the capo's on the guitar. But just remember, even if you play a G, that's not a G. Okay, a G is without the cap, but the minute you stick that capo on, that is no longer a G. Yes, you're playing the G shape, so I could play a song if I play G, C, and D. Yes, I'm playing the chords, but they're not actually, that's not the pitch they're sounding at. What the capo is actually doing is, it's acting as a nut. So we're essentially just moving this nut up the neck. So now everything, two frets higher, tone higher, so that, that G chord, if I play it there, it would actually be an A because there's my root note. My middle finger is on an A. When I play it open like this, my middle finger is on a G. So bear that in mind. So if you see a song or you're jamming with friends and you're used to playing with a capo on, just know that as soon as you put that capo on, it's changing what the chord is. Okay, so if you're playing G, C's and D's in open position, it's not the same when you put a capo on. So if I'm playing G, C and D, <laughs> With a cap on, I'm actually playing A, D, and E. Okay, if I move the capo up to, say, the fifth fret, now I would normally tune, but just for this video, I'm gonna get through. If I play the same chord, as much as I'm playing the G, the C, and the D shapes, I'm actually playing a C chord, because there's a C. I'm playing a F, because there's my F note, and a, and a G. So that turns into C, F, and G. And just to show you that I'm not telling you lies, you can hear the notes are the same. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. As much as you're playing other chords, or you're playing the same chords in different areas of neck, they're not actually the pitch that they are without the capo. Okay, and then the final tip of this video, something I see people kind of get wrong a lot, is the placement of the capo. Now, this capo is actually really, really good. So if you've kind of got other types of capos, they'll be even more obvious. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to place the capo in the fifth fret. Now what I see people do sometimes is they'll stick it right on top of the fret like that, okay? Now, now what that's doing is kind of muffling the frets a little bit. Like I said, this capo is particularly good. So it's covering a lot of the damage that could be done if it's uh, with a different capo but the strings are not ringing out as much as they would do. Ideally with a capo, you want it behind the fret. I'll just say, put it roughly in the middle, okay? You don't want it too far back. If you go going too far back, you might end up in the wrong fret. So you want to be somewhere, just go just above the dots. That way, when you play the chords, the strings will just really ring out really, really nicely. Very similar, as I said before, about moving that nut. It's as if you've moved the nut upwards, okay? So when placing the capo, on the fretboard, stick it roughly in the middle, not on top of the frets. So just imagine if you were placing your fingers on the fretboard, you know, we wouldn't go right on top of the fret, we'd go kind of somewhere in the middle. The same thing applies with the capo as well. So just to quickly recap on those three tips then, tip number one was when it comes to tuning with a capo, stick your capo on the neck and then tune. Tip number two was, just remember, as soon as you put a capo on, the chords that you used to play in open, the pitch is changed, it's not the same anymore. And the final tip, capo tip, is stick it roughly in the middle of the frets. Don't go sticking it right on top of the fret wire. Everything I'm using in this video, we've been using this awesome Snark tuner, we've been using the Daddario Floor tuner, this really great capo, which I am 100% going to take home with me because it's absolutely wicked, and this lovely Yamaha guitar. It's all going to be in the description below. I've been Ryan Haberfield for the A-Strings YouTube channel. If you want to get in touch with myself, I have a Facebook group you can join if you want more guitar tips and tricks. I have online courses and lessons. 
for my online guitar school called fretlist.com. If you're interested in becoming a better guitarist, you can hook up with me that way. I hope that was all helpful and I look forward to catching up with you all soon. Cheers. Hello, Adam here. Just letting you guys know that you can check out Ryan on all of his teaching platforms across Facebook. You've got fretlix.com. And if you go through the link below in the description, you get 50% off through our A-Strings affiliation. I don't know what you call it, but that's what it is. Any of the products that Ryan is using in any of these teaching videos are available through us here at A-Strings. We've put in the products in the descriptions below too, so you can check them out. And that is it. Enjoy the videos. Ryan, have a good one, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.